Hello, my name is Christian. I'm from Larsen Data in Denmark. We run a free uh, DNS service and we are domain registrar for around a quarter million uh, domains. Um, I want to start with this uh, slide, uh, love and hate relationship. Uh, I want to explain why I feel like that. And that's because I love valid who is, but I hate who is validation. Uh, it's pretty simple. For example, uh, sometimes we send out invoices and I love the fact that I can actually send that invoice to my customer and it reaches my customer. It makes it so much easier for them to pay me. So with that, you know, valid customer information helps me in my daily work. It also helps me to help my customers. We have a lot of customers with invalid who is. Sometimes maybe they forgot to update their email. They uh, try to access their account. They can't get in. They call us and uh, need access, but I can't validate who they are. It could be because they put in a one company that never existed. It could be just a spelling mistake or that they went bankrupt twice the last five years, uh, that they just forgot to own or change the domain or something like that. The the reason I hate who is validation is uh, there's more reasons. Uh, one, it's done in so many ways. The second reason, which is why I really hate it, is that uh, it's done b quite often in order to prevent crime. But what it actually does is that it, it helps the criminal uh, to, to become even more invisible. Because a lot of the criminals before, they, it was quite easy. They, they only needed the domain maybe a week or two. So they, they registered a domain with invalid who is because it's the easiest way. But now we actually kind of force them to put in valid information. And they, they of course, they don't put in their own information. That would be stupid if they are about to steal a lot of credit card information. So they, they would maybe uh, take my name and address which is easily to find in a phone book and put on the domain. And for .dk, for example, it was automatically validated. So they take my name and address, everything goes through, and then they start stealing credit card information. You know, it's, it's like, it's like you, you ask a bank robber to put on a Christian mask and go in to rob a bank because it will be so much easier to find him afterwards. I don't get it. So, and that's what's happening today. We saw it earlier that sometimes the kernels were using valid who information, but it was not happening that much. Nowadays, it's happening more and more because they have to, because they have to put in valid who is information. Unless they see my slides and find out they can just put in another country, because it's so much easier. Um, but uh, let's, let's go on to, uh, I have a couple of slides that explains both uh, how who is validation is done in a couple of countries, but also some of the, the issues around it. Uh, let's start with uh, special characters. I was more or less done with my presentation, and then I should put in a name on it. And I was told that I couldn't put any, uh, I should put in my name, but we note special characters. And if you see my name, I have a Danish uh, special character in it. It makes uh, quite a lot of problems. Uh, also here. Uh, so um, so I had to change my name. I do that all the time on flight tickets and hotel bookings as well. So I changed it to the to the machine readable part in my passport, which was the OE instead of the Ø. Uh, so yeah, to, in order to do who is validation presentation, I had to start with changing my own name. Uh, it was the only way to upload the file. Then I, I uh, took a look at the agenda to, to find out <laughs> how much time I actually had to speak in. And then I found out that my name was changed one more time. Because uh, in Sweden, the, they have a different version of the Ø that they use uh, quite a lot of times. Uh, I used to live in Sweden for just one year, uh, or one and a half year, and they also changed my uh, last name. So in the Swedish personal register, I also, also have this name. I also have another last name, which I, in, in Denmark, deleted in 2006. But uh, actually, I forgot to update it in the Swedish database, and I have no idea how to do it. So 
so I have a different name in Sweden. Um, but the, but this problem with special characters is actually a problem in a lot of registries. A lot of registries would never allow me to put in my real name. Um, so so I have to change it all the time. Uh, and that makes a problem to get valid who is. Uh, you see registrants in China, they must have much more issues than me. Uh, another thing, I should have put in registrars as well, because actually a lot of registrars is is just as worse as the, the registries. Also, we wouldn't allow Chinese name in our customer des database. And uh, we, as a small registrar, we also use a lot of uh, other registrars for some of the TLDs that we're not directly accredited with. Those registrars quite often doesn't allow Danish characters as well. So I would have to ch change my name here. And also uh, our capital city, Copenhagen, in Danish, it's uh, uh, also spelled with this uh, Danish E, and we would have to change that on all these registrations as well. So for example, if I were to register a .is domain, and I go to the German registrar to register it, I would probably have to change my last name to a OE, even though that uh, .is would actually accept my last name, but the register I'm using is not accepting it, so they are changing it. So it, again, makes it pretty, uh, pretty difficult to have valid who is if you have a special character in a name or address and so on. So, um, next slide, yeah. All road leads to Rome. Uh, again, we have the special characters actually up here because this is a picture from Hong Kong. Um, but all way leads to Rome. Uh, as we just see the other slide, we have that IS, we have that SE, we have that DK. All three registers are handling who is validation in a different way. Um, we have all the item uh, DTLDs. At least they, they are doing it the same way because they have to. Uh, that also means that uh, they are um, not, if you compare to, for example, DK, which is very ex uh, extensive validation, on a com domain, the validation is not that extensive. Uh, it is pretty difficult to make a validation that would work in the whole world. So, and uh, a couple of years ago, I don't remember exactly if it was the first .se registrar contract or the next, but um, I, I found a, a clause about the, the address for the registrant. We needed to, to give, of course, the name, the address, postal code, and so on. But back to this picture from Hong Kong, because they don't have any postal codes. So actually, if we were to follow the contract regarding correct registrant information for .sc on that old contract, we were not allowed to register a domain for a registrant in Hong Kong. By the way, the same applies to a lot of places in Ireland. I don't know exactly uh, how that works, but uh, they don't have postal codes everywhere as well. And that's in Europe. So, um, you know, in order to make who is validation requirements that actually work, to put in a requirement, for example, of a postal code or a name with more than uh, one character, it will be a problem. So, and then you have strange people that put in like drop tables uh, in their name. You know, that's a whole other problem. Um, so, we, I shortly uh, touched the, the DTLD uh, verification. They started not long time ago. Uh, right now, it's uh, mostly uh, email and phone number. It's a pretty easy requirement, but it's also um, pretty easy to have a uh, phone number that's disposable or email that only works for an hour and you get all validated and can go on with stealing credit card information. You know, who is validation will not fix phishing websites. I, some people think that, I have no idea why. That's just not how it works. So in future requirements, they, they are planning to ask us to uh, cross-field um, uh, validation checks, cross-field checks. So we actually have to check if this address exists and the fa format is real and so on. But again, 
you know, everyone here can find my personal name and address and put on a registration. It will validate. It will validate perfect. So, uh, so I have this next slide, which uh, which is a, a validated domain uh, that I registered just for testing this other day. You know, um, um, a lot of Danes would look at this address and they would know it's the public Danish uh, television. Um, uh, again, this this uh, company name it could be a valid company name, but I, on purpose, put it in there, but just for the example. Uh, and the only thing really it is true on this uh, is my email. I could also put in a one-hour valid email, and the the domain would still work. Of course, uh, since I put in this organization name, any manual people checking, they would see this is completely invalid. But if I had put in a company name that was more uh, making sense, uh, you know, it would even go through a, a person looking at it. So um, again, it it doesn't fix crime to do to do these checks, but um, but uh, if for normal registrar uh, registrants, of course, it makes sense to do cross fill. Just don't think it fixes crime because it will not. So, um, I have also included uh, Norway in my presentation. I especially did that because they they. Um, they have extensive um, uh, rules about uh, only being able to register in Norway. It uh, makes it more easy for them to do validation because for companies they have a, a pretty good company database and for private people they have a good uh, database of private people. So um, uh, they check if the, the information we are giving them maths uh, with the name. Um, so, but for foreign registrants, since they are not allowed to register in no domain, they quite often do that uh, anyway. So they use a uh, Norwegian company, and you know, for legit companies, it's pretty easy because they find a Norwegian company that they actually make an agreement with, so everything is good and uh, comes into the database and. At least that that registrant knows who that other company is. Uh, for for non-legit businesses, again, they if I had a company or lived in Norway, they could put on the Christian hat again, and they could uh, pretty easy register a domain in my name. So, um, uh, next thing is that uh, for Norway, they have these uh, great databases. Uh, but what I often see on registrations is that I still see addresses not updated. I even see companies' names not updated and so on. Uh, it should be um, easier for Norway to have uh, th those information better updated. But, uh, but you will see uh, illegal websites and so on using normal company names uh, normally not so much person names because they have a system that that uh, that you have to like put in your number and then you get another number and so on. But companies, you know, super easy. Um, for IS, again, uh, Peter did a, a good presentation on that. I still have it in my slides, uh, especially because again. As I started with, uh, you know, if they seen my presentation, they would know that they can just put in another company, uh, another sorry, another country, because there is no validation. So if if you want to do anything uh, easy and just uh, again stealing credit card information or whatever you want to do, you can register a domain, you can put in another country, and you can go on. Um, yeah. So for .se, uh, on the uh, registrations in Sweden, they require an organization number or a personal ID number. And again, it's only on Swedish registrants. Um, they don't. Um, oh, sorry. And they uh, they send out information to registrars uh, one time per month uh, regarding those of our Swedish customers that have addresses and so on that is not updated, uh, which makes it more easy for us registrars to um, update our information and so on. 
Uh, again, for me as a Danish registrar, I must be honest, I don't really look that much at it because I don't have that many Swedish clients. I have Danish clients and for the Danish clients, they do not have any information. Um, and that is uh, because they just require a unique identification number. They don't require a VAT number or registration number on the company. If they would do that, it would be at least easier to uh, both um, check the companies if they went bankrupt and so on in the future. But this uh, can be anything from a random number to a real local identification number. Uh, I don't remember who from .se yesterday, but they were telling it it could even just be a phone number. That would be a unique identification number. And if you ask me, you know, for a Danish company, uh, of course I would require the Danish uh, organization number. And they would have real nice access to see if that was a valid name and address. <coughs> so um, another thing, this is uh, more or less the same slide that uh, Peter was showing earlier. Uh, especially private people are asking for uh, who is uh, privacy. .se has a, a good solution for that, I think. The problem with not providing who is privacy is that you have people that go in and just put in fake data in who is in order to protect themselves. It could be, for example, if they are um, making a website with a political statement or uh, they want to make a hate site about a company or something, they want to, to protect themselves or at least having their now name out there. Um, so I just wanted to highlight that uh, .se has a, a good solution for that. Uh, personally, I think it's better than the solution we have in, in DK, but yeah, I know that's because how the, how the law is. Um, and now, uh, the UK, they also implemented a uh, registration uh, validation not long time ago. And, you know, to be honest, I think that UK was a prime example of um, not uh, communicating very well with the registrars on how this could be done in a, a better way. But I must give them the credit that uh, I think it's pretty good that they try to do who is validation on the whole world. Uh, it's a very difficult task, and uh, of course, uh, it it you know it takes some uh, try and error in order to get it right. Um, I understand that, um, but it's better than saying, well, if you just put in like uh, FR as a country, and you know, it no who is no validation required. So they are actually trying to validate each and every registrant in every country. So they they. Uh, yeah, the only problem is that they failed miserably doing it, especially in the start. They are trying to do it uh, better, um, and they are also getting better day for day. Um, they found a great company that does address validation in many countries. This company validated all our, uh, maybe not all, but the one I checked, they validated it perfectly, even with small spelling mistakes. Even with my name changed to an OE instead of a Ö, it was validated perfectly. But they forgot to uh, put in a database of all the company names. They forgot to uh, find a system that would check a VAT ID against a, a database to see if that was correct. So their system was actually saying, we have the cur uh, a valid address in Denmark uh, and even though they failed validation and asked uh, the registrants to manually contact them and uh, giving the information. So what we did was actually just to send them a link to the Danish company uh, database showing that this is completely valid. The, the picture, I, um, uh, the domain registration I have here is uh, one of our own test domains. Uh, we use this domain 11, so uh, all the employees know that this is a test domain. Until our customer starts saying the same, it would be a problem. Um, but as you see here, you see um, our company name 
and our address. And I can tell you this is completely valid. So uh, and this uh, picture I have here shows the European registration, uh, the VAT check something. It's pretty easy. I, I put in my VAT number, uh, my own, which and the country code, and it shows up with the correct uh, company name and address. So uh, this is a database that's open for everyone, but UK could have used. Of some reason, they they didn't, and they they felt that they have to start without it, and they thought validating UK registrants was the most important. But for me, uh, maybe 99% of my customers coming from Denmark and failing all of my registration is not a way to do it. I admit it's better to check all countries than just your own, but just start, start at least uh, fixing a system that will check most of your foreign registrants before you just start failing completely all 100% of them. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure UK can tell you more about how they do it today. I won't go into details, but they, they are doing it better, and they, but they also put in a lot of main power in it. So to, to do the calculation if this manpower is worth it or not, you know, that it will probably take years before we can actually check. If you ask me, I don't think we will see less crime uh, because, you know, it's still easy to register a domain name. It's still easy to have it online for a couple of weeks, and that's pretty much all you need. Uh, a lot of the scams I've seen on UK websites is uh, like shipping scams and so on. Uh, it's, it's a bit more difficult to find out that, for example, for a phishing scam, but it's still enough to have your domain online for a couple of weeks. The Whois validation program that that UK and that SC and a lot of other people are doing are not fixing this. But it is fixing helping me sending invoices to my legit customers and it is helping me to help my legit customers to actually find out if it's their domain or not and to help them um, changing stuff and updating stuff. So if just like please think what is it that you want when you start a Whois validation product uh, project. So if, yeah, but back to uh, .dk and Lisa again is one of my favorite uh, TLDs, not really because uh, I, I love .dk, but uh, uh, because um, it uh, takes up so much of my time. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, .dk, they started validation in, in March uh, this year. Uh, uh, they had a deadline in the law. Uh, back, in, I think it was in February, I, I suggested one of the employees that they asked the ministry to get it postponed because it didn't really seem that they were ready. And everything that we saw at least a couple of weeks after, it showed that they were not ready. Um, I give them they didn't uh, set the date themselves, but uh, again, you know, you just it's better to do this right than to just do it because you think you have to. So uh, back to the database, uh, at least in Denmark, we have like really, really good company database. We have a really good uh, person database. So as Lisa said, it, it makes uh, a good ground for doing a good validation. And to do this presentation, of course, I did a, a lot of testing. Um, uh, and I can see that they they changed a lot. It became better. It, it took me actually four tries in order to fail my own validation. I had to like uh, show that I was living like uh, uh, on the wrong uh, street number and and so on. Um, but uh, if this was like just uh, four months ago, I, I would have failed all the four tries that I I did. So and. It, it took them around a half year to to perfect the validation in in order to this, and and just around a month a month ago, um, a pretty known uh, IT blogger on a news website called Version Two, he 
I think he was either revalidating re or registering a new domain, but he wrote this uh, blog post that says "Dig a hostmaster validation for fuck's sake," and because he spent a lot of time on trying to validate his own company, he also had a he also had the special letter U in his name, and uh, on that uh, on the in the company name there was a, a O instead, and he was not allowed to change it. Uh, so they, they, this part of the procedure they they change, so it's easier, especially with new registration, to change it. Uh, with our, um, sorry. Uh, so uh, last week when I was doing all this uh, testing, um, say okay, you you have all these tests, and uh, I will see if I can trick it somehow, especially because I'm having this presentation. So I was saying, uh, okay, I I read this uh, domain to my father. Um, which is not uh, I have helped in with IT uh, for many years, so it felt uh, good to re uh, register a domain name for him as well. Unfortunately, he uh, he passed away two years ago, so I was uh, thinking maybe I can uh, make a memory, uh, memory site uh, for him. So, uh, but I, instead of using my own name, I used his, his mostly to uh, test this. Um, and uh, this domain was completely validated with his name, his address, and everything against this person register. So the person register sent back a code to uh, DK Hostmaster that the registrant was actually dead, but the system still fully validated him. So when you look at this the perfect database, you have to uh, really look into the data you are given and uh, use those data in the right way. Of course, this domain should not be validated. I have not logged in and activated it yet, also because I see no reason to have my father's name in the who is, of course. Um, so uh, then again, foreign registrants, no validation at all, which uh, makes it super easy for me as a, um, if I was a criminal to uh, to go in and uh, and just register a domain in another country. Um, but again, I have to say uh, almost no validation because, as Lisa was telling uh, earlier, they actually do send out uh, snail mails or normal letters to the registrant. If the letter is returned to them, they can assume there's a problem with the address. Could also be a problem with the postal guy. I don't know, but they do. They uh, told me they do some checks sometimes if they get a letter back. But uh, you know, when I was a very small guy and every time I sent a letter to the Santa Claus in Greenland, w uh, he never replied anyway. So it's, it's pretty easy to uh, put in an address where the letter will never get back. Um, the next thing is that uh, if I just want to uh, have, have my Danish address in the WHOIS but I do not want to be validated, because I want to make this, uh, for example, a sh shipping scam site, and I want to make it as credible as possible. Uh, I can easily validate, because I just put in Sweden as a country, my Danish address. And the letter will still go there, because the postman in Denmark will just think it's a small mistake, because they know that Kø is in Denmark. Uh, and they will send the letter anyway, it will not get back to uh, back to DK Hostmaster. And since they have a huge volume of domain names, the chance of DK Hostmaster seeing this will be very small. It will not be like with uh, ISNIC where they actually have time to see the registration going through. Mm. Uh, so what, what can we do as a registrar, for example? Sure, we can uh, we can implement these a lot of da databases and we can do a lot of checks ourselves. But I have to run a business. I have to first of all think on how much money do I make per customer, how much time do I spend per order if I make maybe one or two dollars on a domain name. I also have to see what do my competitors do, and I. To be honest, I'm not going to use, for example, uh, 10 kroners on validation work 
on every domain if my competitors is not. So uh, I don't mind doing validation uh, testing and so on, but it has to be something that all my competitors would have to do as well. So, and I think especially here in Europe and uh, the CCTLDs have the center organization, they should work together more on validation. Why is it that the Swedish registry uh, for Danish clients is not using the same system as uh, the .dk uh, is um, are using. So why is it that we in Denmark don't think we can validate a company in Germany? You know, especially companies, it's pretty easy. We have VIT, uh, VAT IDs. We have a European database for that. It's it should be fairly easy. Maybe not easy, but uh, it shouldn't be as hard as someone is trying to get it to. Um, and again, you know, there's so many reasons why we should uh, do this. Um, helping our customers is one of them. I believe in helping my customers as much as I can do. That is what will make sure I also have customers next year but I will only help the customers that I actually know who is. The customers I, for example, transfer in uh, from another registrar, if I have an invalid who is, I will spend sometimes hours in order to try to find out the history of this domain, to f try to find out if this is actually the rightful owner or not. So. There is many, many reasons for good host validation. But as I think I said a couple of times, just remember that it will never fix crime. And the more who is validation that we are doing, the more the criminal will just use real data and put in on their domains, which would be a problem for normal people. Again, the criminals in Denmark, we have a, a a list of dead people. I can go in, I can find a list of who died a couple of weeks ago. Even with their social security number, which is normally uh, hidden in Denmark. So I have all the data I need. I can also see if there is uh, uh, someone uh, in charge of this dead person's uh, belongings. So it's easy for me to find someone that doesn't have any relatives. And lawyers are not uh, answering letters the first day they get them. So for, for me as a criminal, it's, it's, it's very, very easy to find valid data I can put on a domain. And it's very easy to find valid data that no one would complain about being there. So any questions? Is there any questions to Christian? Uh, no. But I wa want you to correct you regarding, um, probably we have mixed up for you since we're running .nu. Uh, for .nu and foreigners registrants, you can put in random uh, code for the organo field as long as it's unique. But uh, we validate for .se. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, Mikael. <laughs> um, hi, Christian. Uh, thank you for this uh, presentation. Um, just a question for me as a registry. Uh, we have data as to whether our WIS or contact data is correct or not. Uh, apart from um, uh, setting rules and uh, suspending domain names, et cetera, et cetera, would you as registry actually, registrar actually appreciate us sharing that data with you as registrar, or is that something that's really not your uh, concern? Yes, I would uh, love to have the data. I would hate if you would do an automatic update but I would love to have the data. The thing that .se is doing with sending these lists once a month, that can be really helpful for a, for a registrar. 
And I think it's pretty cool that they actually do it when they expect I'm going to send an invoice to my customer anyway. So like 60 days before, as Peter told me, mm -hmm. they sent me a list with customers they think I'm going to send an invoice to uh, with correct addresses. That's a great feature. It helps me as a registrar to service my clients better. Okay, thank you. Okay, one more question. Hi, I'm Lorna. I work at um, nominet.uk. So I just wanted to um, quickly update. Um, thank you for including us in your presentation. Um, in terms of, you're absolutely right, when we first launched, we did attempt to validate overseas data, but we didn't necessarily have all the correct data sources. Um, and I just thought it might be useful for, for people to be aware that we are actually now um, validating. We use um, an external database to validate all addresses um, ac across the world as far as we can, um, certainly for all Scandinavian countries except, unfortunately, Iceland. Um, we, we also have business registers now, so um, I would definitely say for, for anyone um, attempting to validate records outside their own country, that is a, that is a, a useful learning. Um, and it, it, there's nothing more frustrating than, than having records failed that are, that are clearly and obviously correct just because we haven't been able to look at them. And we also have changed our approach to be less, um, I guess, black and white. Initially, it was very much a case of if, um, if we couldn't find that registration, we then actioned um, a workflow and it ultimately ended up with the registrant. We've, we're using a lot of automated um, algorithms, et cetera, now to look at the data we can't immediately validate and classify it into high and low risk. Um, and it is actually now only the data that's high risk. We then have, as you mentioned, we've got put quite a lot of resource into it, but we now have people looking at that data and only when they agree that it doesn't look right does it go out to the registrar. So that's perhaps another learning is um, finding ways to, and we're carrying on working on that, finding ways to automate trying to identify the worst data fr from data that maybe we haven't fully validated, but, it, but it's, um, it, it's, it's lower risk. It, it looks more accurate, um, yeah. So for everything you learned the last past year, what are you doing to share that with the other CTTLDs? Because yeah, that's, uh, you know, on one of my last slides, yep. I would love you to uh, interact with the other CCTLDs uh, and they can start learning from what you are doing on validation at the moment. Yeah. I think it's a really good point and, and um, it would be very interesting if, if registries could work together and benefit from each other's efforts as well. Um, I'm not the uh, data validation expert in Nominet, but if anybody is interested, I'm more than happy to link you up with my colleagues, and I know that we regularly talk to other registries about what we are doing, so anybody interested, just let okay, me know. Okay, we, we're running out of time, so I, before any further questions, I want to have the panel seated. So, please. <laughs> um, and give Christian an applause, of course. Thank you. Excellent, Christian. Thank you.